The DC Universe is widely known to be on the darker side when it comes to its characters and stories. Whether it be Green Arrow walking in on his sidekick doing black tar heroin, Nightwing getting assaulted, or the Joker ripping off his face, or that one panel in Identity Crisis that I still see so vividly that haunts me to this day. When I read a ton of the dark stuff, I sometimes like to clean my reading palette by reading something just a little more light, literally for the sake of preserving my own sanity. I'll get my dragon fruit refresher from Dunkin' Donuts, totally not product placement by the way. I'll run my fingers through my bookshelf and pick out one story specifically, because it's one of my favorite little stories, no pun intended, that always brings me a little joy after reading. That for just a few minutes makes me forget about all the clatter in the world. All the darkness, responsibilities, sadness, and so on and so forth. So I figured I could share it with y'all to maybe make you settle down for just a few minutes and feel a little joy if you're going through a tough time. So without further ado, let's talk about the Little Justice League. Now, at the start of the story, what seems to be Superman is trying to save a plane midair. But in his narration, he's saying that everything is a little bigger than usual. And switching over to Gotham, Batman is preying on the criminals at night, but he's narrating almost as if he's a kid. And then when he punches the thug, the thug says he's not Batman. And in the next panel, we see a little Batman telling him, Yes, I am, punk. I am Batman. While this is all happening, Lucius Fox is talking to Bruce Wayne about how the company's not doing well. But Bruce Wayne is more concerned with the news report that says Superman and Batman are fighting a villain. And while Lois Lane is in Gotham City on the phone with Clark Kent, she says that Superman's in Gotham City, switching over to little versions of Superman and Batman as they're trying to fight off Laronic Man. But they're kind of getting their butts kicked, because they realize they're not as powerful as they were in their original world. But right as everything seems hopeless, the real Superman and Batman show up and defeat Floronic Man. And the little Superman freaks out because he can talk to an alternate version of himself. Meanwhile, on the other end, the little Batman is debating with the actual Batman that he's the real Batman. And while debating this, the little Batman actually tries to fight Batman. And this starts a scuffle between the two, leading little Batman to call in the Little Justice League. As the Little Justice League arrives, it kind of all starts to turn into chaos. Eventually, they realize that everything is kind of going too crazy, so they all calm down and agree to go to the Batcave. And when Alfred comes downstairs to give Bruce Wayne his dinner, he kind of comes in with a surprise, with a bunch of different Justice League members all little and flying around the Batcave. Alfred seeing this, it kind of leaves him in a traumatized state. Moving along, little Batman starts to tell Batman his origin story, that on one fateful night he was walking with his parents after seeing a movie. A bully came across the parents and pushed them way too hard. And little Bruce seeing his parents get pushed too hard, he vowed to strike fear in the hearts of bullies. Little Superman goes on to explain his origin to Superman, which is roughly the same as the actual Superman's. But his parents actually ended up living and they just outran a rainstorm. But as soon as they all tell their origins to Superman and Batman, Mr. Mixapitlick makes himself present and starts to tell Superman and Batman that he made all these little leaguers appear to make Superman happy. But the real fun is only just beginning because he also transported a bunch of little villains as well. Look at Two-Face, bro. He just has pie on one side of his face. All of the little heroes are taken to the Hall of Justice to be kept safe, where they end up meeting all of their counterparts. And the little heroes are so fascinated as to what their counterparts do, like their costumes or their origin stories or who they fight for villains. But while all the little heroes are partying with their counterparts, a priority alert message comes to the Justice League, telling them that there's something going down in Metropolis and what that something is, is the little villains, and they're running amok all over Metropolis. So the Justice League wants to go out but they need somebody to watch the Little Justice League. So they all agree to leave Batman behind to watch the Little Justice League. Meanwhile, the Justice League arrives to Metropolis ready to fight the Little Legion of Doom. But while the Justice League tries to fight the Little Legion of Doom, the Little Legion of Doom actually puts up a good fight. As the fight's going down, Batman is just butthurt that he was left behind to babysit all the Little Justice League members, as they're all just kind of napping now. However, as this is happening, some of the Little Legion of Doom members actually snuck into the trophy room inside of the Hall of Justice. And Little Lex Luthor has just found the father box. Little Lex Luthor uses it on Doomsday to enhance his powers, but just as this happens, both versions of Superman and Batman show up to try and stop the Little Legion of Doom. But things kind of get a little carried away too quickly, because Little Doomsday literally turns into a bomb, and Little Superman tries to fly him out of orbit. Little Superman ends up being successful, blasting him out of Earth's orbit, but he gets caught in the blast radius as he falls back down into Earth's atmosphere. Superman ends up catching him, where we find out that Little Superman died, sending Doomsday 
Doomsday into space. When all of the little Justice Leaguers find out that little Superman died, they all start to cry. And that's when Mr. Mixel Pitlick and Batmite show up to say that they actually made a bet to see if the little Justice League members would come out of all of this alive. The bet was made to kind of prove that if you're a good person in this world, you'll end up dying no matter what. Ironically, Mr. Mixel Pitlick wants to revive little Superman and call off the bet, but Batmite refuses. This enrages little Batman because his best friend died and actually tries to stay in their world because he's seen what true evil is. But Superman tells him that this world already has a Batman and now his world will need Batman more than ever without Superman. As the big Batman tells little Batman that once he returns home to learn that despite knowing that there is great pain and death, there is something stronger than either of the two, even stronger than Superman and that is hope. Before all of the Little Justice Leaguers go back home, Superman tells Little Batman to have faith, to which Little Batman says that it's funny. Little Superman used to say the same thing fading back to their world. Superman then turns to Batman asking if he thinks they'll be okay, and Batman just says that no one can stay innocent forever. When the Little Justice League returned, Little Batman recounts to Little Robin about the world he was sent to. A world where darkness sometimes wins, but so does the light. As Little Batman cries over Little Superman, he explains what the concept of death is to Robin. But Robin just thinks death is when Alfred doesn't give him ice cream. Little Batman with tears in his eyes tells Robin that he is now more inspired than ever to protect the world now that Superman is dead. And as Batman cries and cries, Superman starts snoring, and little Batman snaps back in confusion. As it turned out, little Superman never died, he just fell asleep for a while. Little Batman becomes happier than ever with his best friend back to life, as the two get ready to go back out to fight crime as the world's finest duo. Ending the story. I hope y'all liked this video, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.